Okay, hi, we're back, and our first uh, guest today is Richard Lake, and Richard has so many interesting things to tell him that I hardly can wait. Hi, Richard. Hi, Carol. And I'm so glad to have you here. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. And I've, I, this looks so exciting, all of these little things you've got. Uh, do you want to talk about the book first, or do you want to tell us about these little things? Well, this relates to the book. The book is the title 9-11 2.0, if we had another 9-11. We know the first 9-11, the government had an agenda, and many people agree that they lied to the people and went to war in the Mideast, and it was a false flag bringing down the buildings. Mm. My premise with this novel, if there was another 9-11, the first one was very effective, and it, the book is written to entertain, it's a novel, mm -hmm. and enlighten, and it's written a bit in the notion of the movie The Matrix, oh. where you had the red pill, which is where you take the red pill, you see what's really going on, <laughs> and the blue pill, which is the way things are which I have a number of articles here about politics and big big pharma and the government yeah. and how we're all kind wow. of getting uh, well, that, I, getting that is, screwed by yeah, them. Yeah, I know, but, and I'm glad that somebody is take, thinking about it and, and what could happen again. I mean, what would you do? We did the same thing. We just killed everybody. There was no, no way to stop it. Yes. Well, it's largely believed that you know, there's people highly placed in uh, government, industry, entertainment, certainly banking, mm. that have interests there that were complacent in their initial 9-11. Now, my story is not about that. Again, it's about if we had another one. Fictitious. We're going to hope it stays fictitious. Uh, this is a, his. This is the book, and it's got a very, very interesting cover. And what's inside it is even more. Is this your first book? Yes. Oh my gosh! I, and how did you get it published? Well, I'm self-published, uh -huh. which is that means you can you have very much control, complete control. You get more money, but I didn't do this for the money particularly. I did this. So I just was angry with the way things are in America, our country. What happened to our country? I don't know. I don't know. It's There's homelessness, the banksters doing what they want. Um, you read all, again, this is all newspaper articles, and supplemental material about, from the news every day, about how America's largely going towards a third world nation where you have a small number of people controlling mm. the country oh and God. extracting the wealth from mm. a large percentage of poor people. That is so frightening. Yes. And I, I know about what's happening with the senior uh, people. I, you know, we're just thrown out. You know, what do you do? Throw them out. If you really love them, you pay thousands, thousands of dollars to put them in a place. So it's, it's a it's a bad, bad way that they do it. They very, very bad. Yes. Well, that's that's the oligarchy. That's the uh, now you're aware that the people that own half the wealth of the world could all ride one bus. It's like 80, 80 people in the world own oh, half God. the world's wealth. That's crazy. That's insane. That's, that's not, not right. That's absolutely. That's what I was going yeah. to say that too, because you know we started out with a beautiful country. Yes. And everybody was doing their work, and everybody was getting along and helping yes. each other. Now, people turn their back to you. That's right. And the government. One definition of fascism is where the government is tightly intermingled with the large corporations, and that's what we have. The corporations write laws, submit them to the congressmen that they paid to get elected, and they pass the laws. Oh yeah, they they used to have a, a, a law against m monopolies, and now the business like 
to take over, take over, take over, and they're huge. What, what can you do against them, you know? Exactly. Uh, those are antitrust laws. And AT&T just purchased, an, I think it was Time Warner or something, one of those, another so. major media. And they said, oh, we're not going to raise prices. No, 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 it didn't take long. Uh -huh. uh, they bumped their television, I think it's Direct TV, $5 a month. So immediately they, you know. See, now a parasite shouldn't kill the host organism. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with but that. But that's what's, you know. That, that's, that's what's, what's happening. happening. Yeah. I'm going to read you something. Please, do, if please I may. do that. Actually, it's memorized, so that it's right here in the beginning. Um, well, this book is dedicated to the people of the United States of America. And this is a quote by an English poet. Rise like lions after slumber in unvanquishable number. Shake your chains to earth like dew, which in sleep had fallen on you. Ye are many, they are few. And that's the poet Pierce Bryce Shelley. Oh, that is so true. That is so true. Why do we let these, this group do that? Why don't we, you know, like a going to have a revolution or something? Well, you know, it's illegal to incite revolution, Carol. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> But my book... I don't think they listen to me anyway. <laughs> the book is written to make people think. You know, it's written to inspire questions about the way things are, current reality, the banksters, the way the world monetary system, governmental systems, um, all that. There's what, a lot of information on the Internet. Yeah, that's for sure. What do what you think that the people will get out of reading this book? Well, hopefully they might they might learn something, hopefully. The best way of learning is to do something pleasurable and then when you're done, oh wow, you have a new way of thinking, looking at things, and you learn some. Not to say that I know everything, of course. No. You know, but again, I just took excerpts. The book is peppered with Factoids you'd recognize from the newspaper, television, the little bits they want you to know, and my own thoughts, of course, humor, and it's a regular story. It's a story about a guy trying to get medicine to save his wife. Big Pharma and the government are the bad guys in my story. Oh, wonderful. That's great. I, 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 get, I get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> It, it's so hard now to do anything. You can't even make a telephone call without going through 20 little ding, 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 ding. Push this, push this, push this. Right. Um, another thing in the beginning of my book there is it alludes to George Orwell, who wrote 1984, and Huxley, Aldous Huxley, wrote Brave New World, mm -hmm. and then, of course, uh, was Heinlein wrote wrote, uh, wait, I think I'm wrong, <laughs> <laughs> um, Fahrenheit 451. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, that, uh, it wasn't Heinlein, it was another author. But Fahrenheit mm -hmm. 451, another futuristic, dystopian scary, novel. Scary. Novel, <laughs> scary about how things might end up. And my book is written in the same vein. I think that's fantastic. I, and I love the cover of it. Thank you. Are you going to be writing some no more novels? Well, I thought about writing another one, taking one character from this and putting him in Europe, and yeah, that would have a medical bend as well. But this mm. is more the political. You know. This is nine eleven two point oh. Fool me once. That's really I love the fool me once. Yeah. Don't try it again. <laughs> we all know what that means. Yes, that's for sure. I'm so glad to meet you brought this in, and I recommend it too because we're we're going through it all. The whole world of is going through a bad time, but the United States has to be strong again, and it's got to be for the people and by the people. Would you not agree? I agree. We've gotten very far away from that. It's the political system's corrupted. Do you have a half a billion dollars? 
Sure. I don't. <laughs> so we can't run for president or, you know, it's all corrupted by money. People mm -hmm. know and understand that. And it's, no. I can't think of a way around. Well, actually, there is a way around that in the book. Yeah. Oh, there is. Well, wow. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's exciting. You know, let's, let's, let's read it and get, get into it and do it. The book is a Robin Hood story. It's oh. the, uh, our heroes get a following on the Internet, and the American people are saying, yeah, keep going. <laughs> you guys are doing good. Uh, of course, I can't tell you the whole thing or else people aren't going to buy the book. That's <laughs> right. you gotta, you got to buy the book. And you've got to read the whole thing, too. And so they, how, they get the book how? How do they get the book? The book is available on Amazon. It's for fourteen ninety nine. For the printed version, wow! It is two ninety nine for Kindle. You can download to your device. Also, I have them available. If there's an email address. Email me. I can okay, provide you with that a signed on, is that on copy. on the screen. Your email. That's on the screen. It right? should be. Okay. It should be. Now, did you bring any media in the, to? Uh, Excuse did you me? Any media or, you know, like videos or anything? No, this is the first this first book, first video. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, we try to get the people back so that the people out there will get to know you and to appreciate you. So we're, we're really hoping that you'll come back again to do another interview. Well, I wouldn't mind doing that, Carol. Thank you. Thank you so much. All I'm right. so glad to have you today. Well, thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Uh, All right. We'll be right back.